Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. You need something to power your rig, whether it be built-in uh, batteries, a rechargeable battery pack, or an external 12-volt power supply, or something. And right off the bat, there's a picture there of one uh, that I happen to have, uh, that MFJ switching power supply. Uh, there are others uh, available. Uh, for example, uh, this one that I'm showing you here that is uh, from PowerWorks. Uh, they both do the same thing. They'll power any 100-watt HF rig uh, very nicely. Uh, most of the HF radios that you'll be looking at will need a separate power supply. They're designed to be run on 12 volts. Sometimes they'll put in 13.8, but that general voltage class we call 12 volt because that will be about what your automobile battery uh, puts out unless you've got one of those new 24 uh, volt uh, automobiles. Now, for a smaller radio such as a mobile rig that you're using in your home 50 watt radio you don't need much more than a 10 or 12 amp power supply but for that 100 watt HF radio you want the full uh, 20, 25 maybe even 30 amps um, and that will do you fine it will run everything that that uh, uh, radio uh, needs to do now, in the case of the mobile radio that you put in your car, it will come with long wires that you're to, to attach right to the battery terminals. And you'll note that each one of the legs, the black and the red, has a fuse in it. Don't defeat that. Don't wire around those because they're very important. There are certain failure mechanisms that can cause a lot of current to run over that black wire even though it's grounded to the chassis of the car and that can cause a problem and that's why that fuse is there. It's for your safety. Keep it there. Now let's talk about generators and inverters. Uh, generators um, are easily available although a little bit pricey. Uh, they're useful if you have to run more than your station, for example, run uh, some lights or some heat or some cooking equipment, something like that. It's nice to have the extra power. Uh, you're looking at a picture of my generator, and I will warn you that if you don't get the generator out and start it from time to time, when you do need it, you'll find yourself in a world of hurt, because unless you keep these things maintained, they will fall apart. Now let's talk about some of the batteries that you will use uh, to power your handhelds and things like that. They come in a variety of different sizes. Uh, you see them uh, in the book. There's a very nice uh, figure in there showing those. Uh, now the ones that are by far and away the most popular are the AA batteries and then next coming after that the AAA, but mostly you'll see AA. Uh, a lot of the AA batteries are available in rechargeable form with an external recharger or you can just use plain old alkaline uh, AA's and they'll work just fine. A nice thing to have a stock of nearby. Now your handheld radio, uh, like the uh, Oshing that I'm showing you here, has a battery pack built in and a special battery charger for it. Uh, most radios are like that. Here's another one showing you a, a TR22C, which is a fairly old Kenwood radio, and it has a battery pack that can be opened up and uh, AA's inserted into it. So there's a variety of ways that you can do that. The key thing to remember is that you need something to power your station. Uh, if you don't have power, you're off the air. Uh, if you're just running on the battery that's in the handheld, uh, after a few hours of heavy use, that battery pack will go dead. You need some sort of a backup. Uh, probably the easiest backup for your handheld equipment is just to keep double A's on hand. Uh, the double A's will often last longer than the rechargeable battery pack. Uh, so they're very handy to have. If you've got a 12 volt station, it's nice to have some other source of power such as a battery or something like that. I happen to use at my station solar power and you're looking at my solar panels. There's about 250 watts of collection uh, capability there and then those are channeled through this uh, charge controller 
which then goes down into very large uh, sealed uh, absorbed glass mat lead acid batteries which are very heavy very expensive but I've had them for a long time and they've served me very well I have uh, at my station a small repeater battery uh, and then I have uh, the power distribution system which you see here and coming off of all of these are the cords for the various 12 volt things that I've got uh, in my shack in the study and these connectors are kind of standard nowadays so you'll find a lot of power supplies are already set up uh, with these on them one thing that's a little different though these uh, black red connectors here can pull apart uh, whereas a lot of the connectors that they have with uh, the radios as they come from the factory you've got to push a little detent down to get them to pull apart so a little bit of a trade to consider there battery technology is a very hot area right now driven largely by the new electric cars that are coming out and this is an example of a battery uh, by BioNO Power. It has not lead acid but rather lithium iron phosphate chemistry and it makes the battery much much lighter than the lead acid batteries. There's been a revolution in uh, battery technology and it is continuing as we speak today. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On The Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.